Well, hello there. Here we are again with the Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell, and I am out here on my back patio, which is my favorite place to read. I love to read, drink a cup of, cup of coffee out here. It is my favorite. So I wonder where your favorite place to read is. So drop it in the comments. Tell me where your favorite place to read, whether it's your house or somewhere else. I also like sitting in coffee shops, but that's not a thing anymore someday, right? Well, we are on, let's see what we're on. We're on chapter 14, The Sleeping Kingdom. So I'm going to tell you a secret. I don't think we're going to finish this book before school starts, but that's okay. We will keep recording and reading and you can listen when you get home from school or on Saturday morning. Um, you might think I'm old like my kids do, but on Saturday mornings when I was a kid, Yes, we watched Saturday morning cartoons, but also there was a radio station where they had all these like readers theater and um, audiobook type things and I would just sit and listen and play with my toys all morning. So you could do that too. It's kind of fun. All right, The Sleeping Kingdom. Trix insisted that Alex and Connor stay with her the night after her trial. Of course, that meant the twins slept on the ground underneath her birdhouse size home hanging from a tree branch, but it was a kind gesture nonetheless. Alex and Connor couldn't sleep after seeing the walking fish in person. They laid under the stars of the fairy kingdom, most of which were actually just fairies sleeping in midair, and let their thoughts wander. I always thought that the walking fish was one of Dad's stories, one that he made up himself, Alex said. I wonder how he heard it. Probably the same way he heard about all the other stories that come from this place, Connor said. But then why wasn't it as well known as Cinderella's or Snow White stories? Why wasn't it written in the land of stories, Alex said, and then asked a question that had been on her mind for a while. Do you think dad or grandma were ever here? Do you think they ever traveled into the land of stories and just never told us? Connor had to think about it. The idea had crossed his mind once or twice before, considering the land of stories had been in their grandma and dad's possession before their grandma had passed it on. Could they just as easily have been transported into this world as Alex and Connor had? And if they had, how had their dad and grandma managed to find a way home? I don't think so, Connor ultimately decided. They love fairy tales so much, if they ever got here and saw everything we've seen, I doubt they would have left. The next morning, Trix generously thanked them again. I almost dropped my cup of coffee. The next morning, Trix generously thanked them again and again, and after they shared goodbyes and the twins started their journey into the next kingdom. Sleeping kingdom, here we come, Alex said. Why do I have a feeling that the spindle is going to be the most difficult item to get, Connor said. Alex opened the journal to see if his brother's prediction was true. The spindle that pricked Sleeping Beauty's finger was the easiest item for me to collect. I had no prior plan of acquiring it, and it simply pleaded my case to the queen, and she was very sympathetic. She let me take the spindle on the condition that I would return it to her once I was finished using it. Queen Sleeping Beauty is very wise, especially for someone who has been asleep for a century, and I believe she knew more about what I was after than she was willing to admit. Well, that's lucky, Connor said. I wonder what sleeping for a hundred years does to you. Every morning when I wake up for school, after about the fourth or fifth time I hit the snooze button, I always think I can sleep for a hundred years. I wonder if you'd wake up super refreshed or if you'd still be drowsy afterward. That's an interesting thought, Alex said. I wonder if she dreamed about anything. I assumed it would have been a very long dream. The twins had no money left, but claiming to have been separated from their parents, they managed to convince two drivers transporting a cart of goats to let them ride along into the sleeping kingdom. The twins didn't mind sitting in the back with the goats, but the goats weren't thrilled with sharing with the twins. What are you looking at? Connor said to one of them after it stared at him for a good half hour. The road ran alongside a great sparkling ocean with water that was blue as the sky. It was an ocean from their world except a thousand times more vibrant. Look how beautiful the ocean is here, Alex said, and look over there, it's Mermaid Bay. She was referring to a large bay just ahead that curved into the shoreline. It's pretty neat to know that right now, as we sit in this car, there are actually mermaids swimming down there, Alex said. 
Yeah, Connor said. Too bad we didn't bring any snorkel gear. Alex was flipping through the journal, making a list in her head. We have five items collected, she said. All we need are the spindle, jewels from Snow White's coffin, and the saber from the deepest sea. Whatever that might be, Connor said. Alex longingly stared out at the water. What could the saber from the deepest sea be? With all her fairy tale knowledge, she still couldn't figure it out, and it was starting to get to her. She was hoping that at any minute it would just appear in the middle of the ocean. We'll figure it out, Connor said. Or I should say you'll figure it out and I'll pretend. I helped. After they had been on the road a bit, the twins couldn't help but eavesdrop on the conversation the drivers were having. Did you hear about the news from the Charming Kingdom? One of the drivers asked the other. No, he said. Both of the Queen Cinderella's glass slippers have been stolen, the driver said. Stolen? By who? I don't know, but I reckon there's a reward for anyone with information, he said. The twins didn't know how to react to this news. If the kingdom was claiming the slippers had been stolen, had Cinderella or Sir Lambton not put the slipper in their bag? Was there a warrant out for their arrest? And then the most troubling question of all, if they had one of the slippers, who had the other? Both were stolen? Alex whispered to her brother. It has to be that woman we saw in Red Riding Hood's castle, Connor said. She must be collecting for the wishing spell too. I knew it. Let's just hope we get to the spindle before she does. The road turned away from the ocean and the cart headed north into the sleeping kingdom. It was a very peaceful place surrounded by towering mountain ranges. It was, surpri it was a surprisingly dismal land, although the twins weren't sure what they had expected. All the fields were dry and all the trees were bare. Everything seemed like it had been alive for a very long time. Why is everything dead? Connor asked. I don't think they're dead, Alex said. I think they're sleeping. Sleeping Beauty's castle was located in the center of a village called Sleepy Valley, and once the twins arrived there and hopped off the cart, they understood how it had gotten its name. The entire village surrounding the castle looked deserted. The twins found a man standing behind the open window of the bakery. He was resting his head on his hand and his elbow on the windowsill. He was sleeping, standing up. Excuse me, Alex said, not wanting to be rude and wake him. Yes, the man asked with his eyes still closed. Where is everyone? Alex asked. Resting, the man said with a yawn and then began to snore. Sure enough, as the twins walked through the village, they could see many other shopkeepers and servants drowsily moving about inside the shop, slowly getting their work done. They all looked as if they were about to fall asleep at any second. I thought the curse on the kingdom had been broken, Connor said. They don't seem to be sleeping because they have to. It looks like they're sleeping because they want to, Alex said. Alex and Connor walked through the sluggish town and found Sleeping Beauty's castle. The castle was a spectacular sight. It was the tallest structure the twins had ever seen. It was made from peach-colored stones, and its many tall towers soared into the sky with the tallest in the very center. When the twins looked closely, they saw the residue left from the vines that had once grown up the castle walls. There were many vast gardens surrounding the castle, or at least there would have been if anything were alive. Gardeners slept in the garden, still clasping their tools. Every minute they would wake up and continue working, but they would fall back asleep almost immediately. There were guards everywhere, but the twins effortless, effortlessly walked past them. Every once in a while a guard would open an eye and consider saying something to them, but then decide to go back to sleep instead. They found the main entrance to the castle and entered. They walked down a long hall with soaring ceilings that led to the throne room. It had white pillars and a checkered floor. The ceiling was painted to the colors of dusk with vivid pinks and oranges. Guards lined the entire room and they were all entirely con unconscious. Sitting on the throne ahead of them was a beautiful woman. She was speaking with two men. One was tall and handsome and the other was short and old with a white beard. The woman wore a tiara made of silver flowers and had long flowing golden hair. She wore a thin gown, a shade of pale rose with matching gloves. The twins knew without a doubt that it was Sleeping Beauty. She was speaking with a royal advisor and her husband, King Chase. She looked troubled and in a state of deep contemplation. She was tired too, like the twins' mother looked when there was a lot on her mind. Perhaps we should enforce a law. No sleeping permitted during the day, the advisor said. Absolutely not, Sleeping Beauty said. I will not force something so oppressive on my people. Let us not forget that this isn't their fault. 
The curse is over, your highness, the advisor said. It's time for the kingdom to wake up and see that. As far as I'm concerned, the curse is upon us until the day this kingdom is in the exact condition it was before the spell was cast, Sleeping Beauty said. I may be awake, but being asleep for 100 years has taken a toll on them. They shouldn't be punished or held accountable for any of this. Darling, you may have no choice, King Chase said, taking her hand in his. The kingdom is falling apart. There are no crops being grown or business being done. Let me think about this, she said, and let out a long sigh. May I make a suggestion, Connor said, walking toward the trio. He took them by surprise. They didn't know anyone else in the room was unconscious. Or was conscious. Sorry. Alex was a little scared. She had no idea what her brother was about to say. She hoped his speech in the fairy kingdom haven't, hadn't given him a big head. Who are you? The advisor asked. I'm Connor, and this is my sister Alex, he said. Alex awkwardly waved from behind him. You have a lovely castle, she said. How did you get in here? King Chase asked. Seriously? Connor asked him, gesturing to the sleeping guard behind him. This isn't exactly Fort Knox. They don't know what that is, Connor, Alex whispered. Young man, the advisor said. With all due respect, this is a very important matter we're discussing, and, and we've been trying to find a solution for years and still haven't come up with anything that doesn't take away basic human freedoms, Sleeping Beauty said. So if this man thinks he has an answer, I say we let him speak. The men didn't argue with her. Connor had the floor. Have you ever heard of coffee before? Connor asked. They stared blankly at him. Never mind. I've been told it stunts your growth anyway, he said. I fall asleep a lot in school. It's not my fault. My brain turns off when I get bored. A, trickled, a trick I discovered when I remember to use it is to wear a rubber band around my wrist and snap it right when I feel myself drifting off to sleep. The sting keeps me conscious for a good five minutes, guaranteed. They were puzzled by his proposal. Look, it isn't a rocket science solution, but it works, Connor said, and your people could do it to themselves so you wouldn't be forcing them into anything, and maybe if they did it enough, they eventually wouldn't need it anymore. They still needed convincing. Alex turned, Connor turned to Alex for help. Alex, do you have any rubber bands on you, Connor asked. I may have some hair ties in my bag, Alex said. She put her bag on the floor and searched through it, accidentally knocking the glass slipper out onto the floor. The clink echoed through the throne room. Oh no. The twins panicked. It was as if time had frozen. Sleeping Beauty, her husband, and the advisor grew very tense. How did you get that? Sleeping Beauty asked. It's Queen Cinderella's glass slipper, the advisor said. No, it's not what you think, Alex said, quickly putting it into her bag. We didn't steal it, Connor said. Guards, King Chase shouted. A few guards from behind the twins suddenly awoke and became alert. Seize them, the king shouted. Here we go, Connor said. As the guards sprinted toward them, he grabbed Alex's wrist and pulled her into a run. Your majesty, Alex pleaded to Sleeping Beauty. We've come to borrow your spindle. We're collecting objects for the wishing spell. Sleeping Beauty stood, about to speak. The twins couldn't wait around to hear what she said. They were running around the throne room in circles, barely missing the extended hands of guards trying to grab them. Alex and Connor ran through a set of open doors leading out of the throne room. They had no idea where they were going, but they knew they had to move. They had been through so they had been through too much to let guards catch them this time. I'm so tired of being chased, Connor yelled. They ran down the hallway after hallway, making sharp turns whenever they could to throw off the guards. They were moving so fast that the beautiful architecture and artwork at the castle was nothing but a blur. Suddenly, the hallway they were in came to a dead end. Now what are we gonna do, Alex asked. Quick, in here, Connor said, and pulled her through the closest set of open doors. They found a stone staircase on the other side and ran up it. It spiraled higher and higher and the twins wondered if it would ever end. They were climbing to an impossible height. They must have been headed to the tallest tower in the castle. They reached the very top of the stairs and found a big black door. They rushed through it and immediately locked it from the other side. Now where are we, Connor asked and looked around. The twins were standing in a large circular room with tall windows. There were violet drapes in a lavender rug, a balcony wrapped around the entire room outside. Only two pieces of furniture were in the room, an enormous bed and a spinning wheel made from dark wood. Connor, Alex said softly, I think we're in Sleeping Beauty's room. 
the room she slept in for a hundred years. Connor walked over to the bed. There was a beautiful engraving on the headboard that said, For one hundred years she slept, the hearts of her people she kept. So they awaited with patience for the bliss of true love and true love's first kiss. Alex went to the spinning wheel, but the spindle was gone. The spindle isn't here, Alex said. I don't understand. The man who wrote the journal promised Sleeping Beauty he would return it after he used it. Is it not here, or did he just not return it because the spell didn't work? Connor asked. The lock on the black door began to rattle as someone from the other side unlocked it. Hide, Alex whispered. She and her brother dove underneath the bed. The black door swung open. The twins expected to see the clunky boots of the guards, but instead they saw a pair of pink heels. Is that, Alex whispered, is that what? Ouch! Connor hit his head hard on the bottom of the bed. You can come out from there, Sleeping Beauty said. The twins couldn't tell if it was a trap. I've called off the guards, Sleeping Beauty added. No one is going to hurt you. The twins slowly crawled out from under the bed. We didn't s steal the slipper, Alex said. It's hard to explain, but I promise we're not thieves. Sleeping Beauty nodded. I believe you. You do, Connor asked. He was stunned. Because if I were you, I totally think we were thieves. Sleeping Beauty smiled at them and took a seat on the bed. And so you two are after the wishing spell. The twins nodded self-consciously. It's a really long story, Connor said. I'm sure, Sleeping Beauty said. And if you've come to ask me permission to borrow the spindle from my spinning wheel, haven't you? The twins guiltily nodded again. Sleeping Beauty laughed to herself. You know, not too long ago, a man came to my castle and asked me to borrow it, she said. At first, I was completely against the idea, but he convinced me. How did he manage that? Alex asked. He told me all about the wishing spell and how he traveled to another world and fallen in love and was desperate to return. And being somewhat romantic myself, I let him humor me with the story, she said. And her smile faded back into the contemplative expression they had first seen. And then he started describing this world to me. A place of machines and technology. A place of enormous structures and lands and people unlike any I had ever seen. And I believed him. Why? Alex asked. Because I had dreamed about this place, Sleeping Beauty said. It's complicated and even I don't understand it. But while I was under the horrible spell, I dreamed about the place he was describing. I dreamed about so many things. I had just assumed it had come from my imagination. I never mentioned a word of it to anyone, so I knew he had to be telling the truth. Did he ever return it? Alex asked. Desperate to know, did the spell work for him? Sleeping Beauty studied the twins' faces. You're from there, aren't you? She asked, and you're trying to find a way home. Alex and Connor didn't have to respond. She already knew it was true. She reached under one of the pillows on the bed and withdrew a metal spindle. The twins felt their spirits roar. There it was, the man had returned it. The spell must have worked for him. All I'm going to ask in return is that you also return it when you're done, Sleeping Beauty said and handed it to Alex. As I'm sure you can imagine, it has sentimental value for me. The twins were beaming. Now they knew getting home was a possibility. They weren't trapped in the land of stories forever. We're just a couple strangers, Alex said. Why are you being so kind to us? There are many things that are out of my control, Sleeping Beauty said, and her smile faded away. So I like to help as much as I can, when I can. She stood and walked outside onto the balcony. The twins followed her. Although the kingdom wasn't in the best condition, the view was spectacular. Alex and Connor could see the entire kingdom and parts of others. The ocean sparkled in the distance. The beautiful waterfall could be seen in the mountains nearby. It was so beautiful they forgot how high up they were. This used to be the most beautiful of all kingdoms, Sleeping Beauty said. The rolling green hills, the wild flowers, the rivers that used to flow. They're all just memories now. Even the natural beauty of the land was put to rest under the awful curse. Will things ever get better, Alex said? I certainly hope so, Sleeping Beauty said. Can I tell you a secret? She asked the twins, receiving eager nods. I haven't slept since Chase awoke me with the kiss. The twins were shocked. Yikes, Connor said. You must be exhausted. After sleeping for a century, I'll be quite rested for a while, Sleeping Beauty said. I promised myself and I promised this kingdom I wouldn't rest until it was restored to its original state. Had my parents just let me die as the curse originally intended, none of this would have happened. So I'm prepared to spend the rest of my life, the life they ensured, making things right again. 
Alex and Connor felt sorry for the young queen. They'd always been so distracted by the thought of a cursed sleeping kingdom that they'd never thought about the responsibility a monarch would face putting it back on its feet. I suppose that's why the wishing spell has always intrigued me, Sleeping Beauty said. It's proof that if someone wants something enough and they're willing to work for it, they can achieve great things. I keep the spindle as a reminder that even the worst curses cast by the most powerful enchantresses can eventually be overcome. The kingdom is very lucky to have a queen like you, Alex said. A weaker person would have given up. Try the rubber band trick, Connor told her. I promise you won't regret it. I will, Sleepy Beauty smiled. It's probably time you headed out. I may believe you, but convincing my husband and the royal advisors of your innocence won't be easy. Follow me. I know a secret way out of the castle. The twins left the castle feeling inspired by Sleeping Beauty. The fairy tale had always romanticized the bravery of the young prince and the horror of the curse that had been cast upon the land, but it failed to mention what a strong and brave woman the Sleeping Beauty truly was. Well, that is it for chapter 14. They're getting closer, aren't they? All right, you guys have a great day. Stay cool today.